Hello everyone, welcome back to the Executable Content Channel. This is me, Pointless, and today I'm restarting a series that I took down. Um, I took the series down because I generally wasn't happy with the code and uh, how I did the videos. So today I'll be remaking the tutorial from scratch with better code and uh, a better outlook. Nothing will be improvised this time. I also forgot to mention that I'm doing this with a fan. His name is Nick, and let's introduce you to him now. Hello everyone. I am Nick, I'm your co-host, and I'm helping out Pointless with his tutorial series. I got into Hackline coding over his original tutorial, and I was happy because he took it down, so I decided to make a new one with him. Sorry for the bad mic quality, I don't have a mic that is good as Pointless is, so yeah. In this series, you will learn how to use IntelliJ, how to import your client, how to run it, debug it, and then finally export your client into the Minecraft launcher. We will go in depth into explaining the event bus used, the modules made, and how our code interacts with Minecraft. As always, all resources used will be in the description. Let's begin. So first things first, you want to paste the uh, the link that we uh, provided in the description. This is going to be the MCP that we will be using. We are going to be coding on 1.8.9 Minecraft this time. And so you just want to go ahead and download this. After you have that downloaded, we want to download the Optifine sources. So you want to go over to uh, this uh, URL, go ahead and enter that. And then uh, you want to download the 1.8.9 HDUL5. So we'll go ahead and download that. Once you have those two files downloaded, what you want to do is you want to install the palm.xml that we have in the description. So now let's go ahead, go to our desktop and we're going to make a new folder we're going to name this our client, which is going to be best client. Let's go ahead and add that. So there you go. Now we have best client. So now let's go ahead and add the Maven MCP. You want to go ahead, open this, and you want to drag all of this in here. So after you've done that, what you want to do is you want to take the palm.xml that you've uh, downloaded. And you want to go ahead and replace the one that's already here. So we're going to go ahead and replace the file. After that, we want to go ahead and open Optifine SRC, and uh, we want to go ahead into SRC main um, Java, and we are going to replace net. So after you've done that, what you want to do is you want to go back to main, and you want to go into resources, and we are going to replace assets. So replace all the files, and uh, there you go. So. After you have done those things, what you want to do is you want to go to the third link, uh, which is Adoptium. Now, this is going to be the uh, JDK version that we use. So you want to go here um, and then in version, you want to go ahead, change that to eight. Make sure you install the right thing. So we're going to go down until we see Windows and uh, you want to keep scrolling until you see x64. Make sure not to download the x86 version. You want to go to x64 and you want to download um, any any one of these uh, any one of these two up here so we're going to go ahead and download the msi ones for uh, a quick install so let's go ahead and do that so now we are going to go ahead and open up intellij and um, you want to open and you want to go over to your um, desktop. So let me go ahead and do that. Users, administrator, um, desktop, and then best client. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and open it. Uh, I'm going to trust project. So there we go. And now first things first, let's open up palm.xml, the one that you replaced, and you want to set your group ID. Now this could be whatever. Usually I go with lol.point. Uh, which is a group, uh, a group ID. Now you want to go client name, make sure there is no space. So we're just going to go best client like that. Description, we're going to go, this is the best client. And then for client name, or again, we're going to go best client. Now this one can have a space in it, so that should be fine. And we're going to go into Maven. And we're going to go ahead and reload all Maven projects. There you go. Now we're going to go over to file, we're going to go to project structure. Now you want to go ahead this, we're going to add SDK, JDK, uh, program files, and then Eclipse Adoptium and click on this JDK and then hit OK. And now we're going to uh, transfer over to Nick 
to uh, finish up the tutorial. Hello everyone, here's your co-host Nick and let's continue with the tutorial. Alright, after your files have finished indexing, you should see everything here including the source folder. If your files, in this case the source folder, hasn't shown up and only for example the pom.xml and .gitignore are showing up, then you have to follow the steps pointless showed in the project structure. So, as you can see, the environment I'm in looks quite different from the one from Pointless. That's because I am using the new UI from IntelliJ. I have a plugin called Material Theme UI, which allows me to give some themes. For example, this theme is called Material or Docker. If I switch this, if I switch, I can, for example, get another theme, right? But for my sake, for my eyes, I'm going to switch back to the theme I had before. That's going to be Mathereum. Material darker, but somehow it's not available, so let's go synthwave. And now we can go back to material darker. My bad. So, what we can do is to access project structure. If you're a new UI, if you have it too, you go here and then project structure of the old one. You can do file and project structure. Right. So, let's get micro funding. So, to do that, go to current file, add the configurations, click on the plus button, and very important, application. Now, you can name it whatever you wish to be. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to call it Start. Now, choose the correct SDK, so SDK 8. If you set it up in a project structure, you can just use it from the module, right? So here, type in Start. Very important from not any of these, but from the default package. Double click that. If it says main class not found and it errors, still just type it in like that. Very important, capital S, and leave it in there. Now, another very important thing is we have to set the working directory. So here, type test underscore run. That's because all the assets are in here. For example, if you do not type in this directory, which is here, given with the MCP we've given you, you won't hear sounds when you run a Minecraft from IntelliJ. But you will hear it if you run it from the Minecraft launcher. But you just won't hear it in development, which I like to do. I like Minecraft sounds, I like Minecraft music. I enjoy it. All right, click apply. Okay, now let's run it. Now what you'll see is that, oh yeah, if you get this, just enable annotation processing. And if you haven't got that pop-up, go to File, Settings, and search for Annotation Processing. And if this is not checked, check it. As you can see, we've gotten an error. That's because I've updated some dependencies that Minecraft has. For example, Oshi. This is dependencies which gives a lot of utility for getting, example, what graphics card you have, what CPU you have, how many cores, etc. Minecraft uses a very old version, version 1. I updated it to the latest version of the point of recording this video to 6.4.5 and some other dependencies. For example, the one with Lock4j because that one, <laughs> Lock4shell, not a nice um dependency because it has an RC remote code execution. So what you have you just have to do is remove the import, scroll down where you have the error, there you see, and we will provide you this in the description. Just copy it and paste it in there. As you'll see, it will stop erroring if you just import it. So Alt plus enter and enter and you'll see it's gonna import it automatically and it's not erroring anymore. So, if you try running it, you'll see there will be another error. That's because the Optifine sources did something funny and put this for some reason. So, what you have to do is just remove this line. This is located in get matrix in model rotation and in the return statement, just in this where it says new Java X matrix 4F, remove this dot get matrix 4D. There we go. It's going to stop erroring. Now let's try running it. There may be some other errors you will get, may get, not necessarily, and I will cover them. If you get some error which I did not cover, please write it in the comments. Now as you can see, Minecraft is running clearly and I didn't get any more errors, but I will cover some which I sometimes get. In this case, I didn't. Okay, as you can see, Minecraft is running. Go to MCP World. This comes shipped with the MCP we've given you. 
you can just create a new world if you don't like MCP world, but whatever. As you can see, Optifine is nagging you, but we decided for this Optifine versions because in this version, the mappings are not messed up. In this version, the mappings, so how Minecraft is deobfuscated, is very bugged and it's very hard to code in it. Very annoying. Not hard, but very annoying. We'll remove this message later on anyways. Alright, so you can see it's run perfectly, but I will cover some errors that are possible when setting this up. So, the first error, and which is quite common, is in a class called Cartesian, or whatever, however you pronounce it. Cartesian, whatever. There, there's a common iter in the iterator method. If you have an error here, what you have to do, again, this will be provided in the description, just copy it and paste it. There we go. This is going to fix your issues. All right. Another possible error. In some bases, well, some, if you use another Optifine version, is that if you go to Minecraft client, then... Ah, I'm just going to search it. If you want this pop-up, press shift two times consecutively. So shift two times. There we go. Entity renderer. Oh, wrong class. Entity renderer. There we go. So uh, net Minecraft client renderer. And then entity renderer. As you can see, this is just some garbage. You can just delete that. In some Optifine sources, there's like another entity renderer class, and there's one where it has a dollar sign in here between, or there's just like one entity renderer class, but it has like a dollar sign. If you find entity renderer error, if, like, if it likes errors, we haven't found entity renderer, just go into net Minecraft client renderer. I look for entity render with a dollar sign in between. Just refactor it to remove this dollar sign and then like refactor. I'm gonna cancel because it's already alright for me. Another possible error is that let me just look. Oh no, that's gonna be it. Uh yeah. So these are all the errors that I know of that I've gotten in my time of development. You've got any, just send it in the comments. Alright. We can start running this. There we go. I'm going to use debug in later videos. We're going to explain why this is useful. This is very useful for debugging, finding bugs in your code. And it's very, very useful if you want to hot swap your code so you don't have to restart your game always. It spares you a lot of time, especially when you make visuals. All right. So let's go single player, MCP world. Ah, love it. And you'll see there's some Optifine nagging. So. What we're we going to do naturally, we're going to remove it. So, for this, you got to go into Entity Renderer in the method called FrameInit. So, you will see there is... There we go. There's this if check. If all is equal to null, then there's two if checks inside of that if check. If config.getRelease isn't equal to null. And if config.isNotify64bit in Java. What you can do is just remove that, not pet out, no preparation in assembly. <laughs> and this is going to show how this debug is useful. Well, no, actually not. We have to restart it because it. You'll see that another time. <laughs> there we go. And the loads. There we go. And join the world. You'll see magic poof. Single player MCP world. And no more Optifine nagging. We're free of it. Hallelujah. So yeah, um, that's the first tutorial, the setup. I hope you enjoyed. And there's going to be a little clip on Debian Linux. Hello everyone, here is your co-host Nick. And as you can see, the desktop environment has changed quite a bit because I am on Linux right now. If we check this out, LSP underscore release dash A, we can see I'm on Debian, GNU Linux 12. And what I want to show is a cool thing about the <coughs> MCP we used is that it has Linux support.
sadly not macOS support so as you can see if I run it now it's starting so let's go in into the new world and you can see I'm inside of Minecraft 1.8.9 I'm here I have free works everything is really good and yeah 